Atlantic at Sundance. I'm Hannah Georges, a staff writer with The Atlantic, and I'm so excited for this conversation with the actor Regina Hall. Regina has enjoyed over two decades of success in the entertainment industry, spanning both mm. television and film, and now she's starring in the highly anticipated drama premiering at Sundance, Master, which she also executive produced. Regina, thank you so much for joining us. Let's jump right in. Yes, thank you for having me. So you have two films in this year's Sundance Fest Festival. In Master, you play a Black woman who's the newly appointed head of students at a predominantly white college where things start to get uneasy, to say the least. And in Hong for Jesus, Save Your Soul, you play the first lady of a prominent Southern megachurch. Both of those positions have such fascinating relationships to power. What drew you to the films? Um, gosh, they, you know, one was the script. I mean, I think I would say that's the first thing. I thought they were um, really interesting, well-written, um, the ideas, I mean, uh, uh, behind Master, you know, uh, when I met Mariama, I, I really felt like she was an incredible filmmaker. She was very clear on her vision. Um, I thought the way she approached the subject matter in, in, in a thriller, was also really interesting and 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 quite thought provoking, and I love the character and I love the world, that kind of world of academia. And then Hong for Jesus, the same thing. You know, I thought um, the twins, Adama and Adane, I thought as a directing and producing team and a writing team that they were really um, incredible. And of course, it was exciting to work with two up and coming um, <clears throat> uh, black female directors, especially right now and so you know everything about it excited me such a great job of playing black women who have really appear to have it together or who feel like they need to appear that way but are struggling with some like deep sense of anxiety about the trajectory of their lives right like whether that's gail and master or thinking of brian and girls trip or carmel and nine perfect strangers uh how do you go about imbuing those characters with that complexity right and do you make different <laughs> considerations when you're working with comedy versus drama? I think the way I probably look or break down the script is differently from a comedy or drama, but from a character point of view, there's not much difference. I mean, I think you're always trying to figure out what the humanity is of a character, whether it's a comedic beat. I mean, I think you might look at beats differently, but I don't know. I think I love playing interesting people. And sometimes, you know, I mean, there, there, there's humor in every single thing. It's kind of which, which version you choose to focus on. So for me, um, whether it's Carmel or um, Gail or Trinity, you know, whoever, they're all, Ryan, they're all, um, there's some kind of intrinsic truth, some inherent quality that I think, um, I don't know, that usually jumps out and usually is kind of interesting um, to play with. Um, and I don't know, it just, it feels like um, great opportunities to delve into um, another perspective. I mean, I was especially thrilled to see you take on the role of horror heroine as a longtime fan of Scary Movie, <laughs> like a real Brenda stance since way back in the day. Um, you know, just uh, I love Brenda too, you know? It's like approaching Brenda is really no different than anything else, except she's heightened and, you know, <laughs> it's like, <Right. laughs> Brenda's not like, but we know versions of Brenda. I think that's the thing you've got to, because we right. do, you know, we, that's the fun that is to know versions of all these different people. Right, right. Are there are there roles like that that you're really attached to or that you feel like you learned a lot from like over the years? I mean, I think the great thing is like just working with different people. I feel like I've learned so much and that to me is so much fun. Um, I'm, of course, I love Brenda. I mean, because I, I mean, I played Brenda more than I played anyone else in the world. <laughs> I played yeah. Brenda four times. Um, it's interesting to, to play her because there's such little evolution, um, but she's like so much fun. <laughs> and I think with her, you know, it, the great thing with Brenda is you get to do the absurd, but still she's relatable. And I, so I think for every character, even in About Last Night, you know, there are versions of degrees of who we are. So 
I don't know. I can't, they're all like incredibly dear to me for different reasons. And, you know, every time you look at a performance, you feel like, you know, you could, you could have done better, but there's, a, there's, there's still something special about every single one of them, but probably Brenda being my first um, big um, comedic role, I had never really thought about comedy before. And so to be able to do a comedy and work with the Wayans, like it was, that was, that was a really big, um, a really big fun time. Yeah, I mean, and it's so interesting to see, to go back and watch that and then see a character like Gail, who's just like the picture of restraint for so much of the film, right? And she's sort of seemingly trapped in this institution that was never made for people her, like her, never made for people like us, right? Like how... Yeah is in, in approaching that role and just in general, like how have you navigated like isolating experiences in your own career, right? Like whether that's in Hollywood or even before pursuing acting. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just kind of what life is, right? You're always, we're always kind of navigating, you know, a truth versus a reality. And they both usually coexist at the same time. I mean, I, you know, obviously I went to, um, college so the academic world is very familiar the world of um you know race and racism is very familiar and it it shows itself in many different ways at, at many different times but i think that and and sexism you know what i mean so i think even as women we're constantly navigating the idea of um kind of isolating an experience from you know from the entirety and I feel like for, for Gail really believing that this next step for her is some kind of um, pinnacle for acceptance or change for whatever you know reason and so you know what she kind of accepts and then what life or you know those circumstances force her to have to um, acknowledge within herself and within the world and and more importantly within the university this this institution that she has really tied so much of her own self-worth and success into and I, I i don't know i felt like um i don't know i feel i don't know i thought and and also um mariama's writing allowed for that i mean she wrote such a um a contained character until finally it just kind of she just, she, it, it is, it is what it is. But, you know, I think there's a part of us that feels like in order to navigate in other worlds, we have to be contained, which is what was fun about Brenda, because she's completely non-contained, <laughs> you know, like, right. I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't, she it doesn't matter where she is, you know, she's um, unapologetically herself. And so there's, um, so it's interesting that to um, kind of navigate those worlds. Yeah, I mean, when you think about the work that you want to do in the world, right, like whether it's the kinds of roles that you want to take on or the works you want to produce, right, like is there anyone that you draw inspiration from or like lean on for creative advice? Um, oh, gosh, I draw inspiration from everyone. I mean, there's so many great pictures and so much incredible talents of all types in the world. And like, I love watching movies. I think watching people kind of become characters. I get, you know, you learn so much about yourself and about, I don't know, like other points of view in life and watching people in real life and having friends in real life and knowing people and, you know, all those experiences I feel like lend themselves to like your craft, you know what I mean? Like, but there's something about like your own family members and like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that you can base so much in friends and experiences. So um, there's so much to draw from in life. And then other artists are just, I mean, I love watching other artists and everyone, you know, if I work with people, when I work with people, I watch them. I love to watch directors and I don't know. I feel like everything is something, has something to teach you. The last thing you watched that like took your breath away or that you were excited to, to pull from, whatever that might be. I watched a few things recently. Can I name more than one? Yeah, please. <laughs> please. Um, I recently loved um, Swan Song because I just 
I don't know. I thought it was beautiful. The premise, the story, the performances. I love, um, I love Tick, Tick, Boom. I thought, and, and Andrew Garfield's vulnerability, and that was amazing. And I also loved um, um, the eyes of Tammy Faye with them. I thought the two of them were amazing. There's so much. I mean, the truth is there's so much, and there's so much, there's so many great things to watch, you know? I loved the, I love being the Ricardos. I, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I, I hear things, I watch them, and I don't know. I just look at the honesty in some of those performances and I'm like, you know, blown away. Now in, in movies and production, in addition to all of the acting that you've been doing for so long and that folks know you for, like what, what kinds of things excite you most? What are you hoping to, to put out into the world? Oh gosh, I love stories that are different that may be in perspective on stories that we haven't seen. And, you know, I love stuff that's thought provoking so that when you finish watching, like you wanna call your friend and say, and maybe you disagree or agree. You know, I, I, I tend to not see the world in black and white. So I love um, stories that also aren't just told or, you know, seen from that point of view. You know what I mean? So I get, I don't know. I, I mean, hopefully I have some things that are coming to fruition that you will love and be like, oh, I really like that. Um, and some of it might be surprising, you know, some people, they might be surprised at what, you know, you know, there's things you respond to as, a, as an actress and things you respond to as a producer where you're like, that would be really fun to make. And like, um, you know, I think about some incredible, like, emerging talent, you know, behind in front of the camera. And like, that's exciting to be able to discover, you know, I can't wait to start like, like discovering incredible. That's what I mean, I do love that about, um, about um, Master and Hawk for Jesus, like finding like two incredible black female directors who wrote it, and directed it and, um, our DP on Master is um, Charlotte. She's amazing. She's a woman. And like, you know what I mean? It's just seeing different kinds of people. And, 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 and not because they're different, but because it gives you a different viewpoint of creativity. You know what I mean? It's not just because, because it's, it's the creative muscle that you're watching them exercise and they're seeing it from that lens. And then you get to, that opens up a whole other world. So that's exciting. Yeah, what kinds of things did you learn on, on both of those? Oh my gosh. Well, they were both, they were both challenging. They were not, um, they were challenging performances, but you know, you know, but it was worth it. You know, sometimes you learn that it's worth it and, and for different reasons. I mean, you know, hats off to Mariama who did, directed her first film that got shut down during an international pandemic and then came back a year later in the middle of the coldest winter and had to reshoot and recast. And you watched her maintain, you know, every sense of leadership and calm and like continue to lead that ship and, you know, and they're not telling like easy stories, you know, even if they veil it in the, you know, in the, in the, in the thriller or in a, you know, satirical comedy, you know what I mean? And um, they're very specific. I will tell you that there's a speci specificity in <laughs> both of those directors, but I think that's what's going to make them, you know, can, you know, work and continue to be, to be great and get better and better. I think, I think, and they love what they do. That was interesting to see too. I, I loved seeing them. There's a, they're, they were tireless and they're young. You know what I mean? That's, that's also great. They're, they're, they're young. They're just getting started. Yeah. yeah. What was it like for you to, I mean, to watch them navigate the pandemic, as you just said, but also to experience it yourself, especially with so many different projects going on. Yeah, I mean, I think the pandemic changed a lot of, of things, you know, um, in shooting. 
um, in connecting between scenes and how you're able to rehearse. Um, and, um, you know, protocols. I mean, it probably helped with craft services because you can't go there as much, which I think is a good thing. But I do love to eat. So I can't say that I didn't miss it. Um, <laughs> I miss craft services. Um, we still have it, but it's different. And in a lot of ways it's better because it's not as many hands, but it, you gotta go to it. And so it's not as like easily accessible. So you do snack a lot less than when they just used to have a dozens of Krispy Kremes. Um, so that that's, that's a good change, I guess. Um, <laughs> healthy change but I you know I do I think I think so much of what you do on set is really connected to being connected and so there's a there's there's a different way that you know you have to learn to connect in a different way you have to rehearse in a different way you're in you know you're in master and you're in your mask and your shield until it's time to say action so you've got to almost really like um I don't know. You have to be so present to be able to, to get it done. So, but it's good too. You know what I mean? It, it's good. And it was, and it's for everyone who would come to work and show up and get their tests and do everything and, and do that, you know, from one year when we shut down to a year later when we came back, it, you know, it's great. And then we did it in Atlanta. So, I, I mean, I, I, you know, kudos to film and crew and talent that actually you know what I mean, that, that do their part and to our, you know, to our um, COVID team who not always easy to wrangle, I wrangle crew and actors and say, put your shield on. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like people are dying to hear it, but they did and, and they kept us, you know, safe. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, this intensity of that or like of isolation of everything that's, that's happening, right? Like of a really fraught few years, right? Like has any of that changed how you think about the story and about the kinds of things that you, you know, want to see out in the world, whether that's stuff that you're producing or just things that you want to watch? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I you know, I'm probably slightly a bit of a loner myself. I don't know how much of a giant change it's made for me, but I think, um, I, yeah, I think probably it does change what I want to watch, but what I want to say, because I, I do feel like the more connectedness we could be made aware of, um, the more compassion that we could, you know, and we could see in stories um, so that when we see other people, we, you know, in a sense, see ourselves. Um, and then some stuff that's just funny, you know, <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just good to laugh and like, so, you know, have some it's kind of a little trifling and a little and funny, you know, because, because both can be true. <laughs> Both are true. So yeah, I yeah. I mean, I think I think that's the, the I think that's the, probably the biggest and the, the, the toughest part is navigating um, is 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 navigating you know what a moment of escape. That also could be thought provoking, but you know, that isn't preachy. You know, no one wants to be preached to. So like how do, you know, what are the subtleties that just make us as human beings think or talk or have a different, you know, vantage point? Yeah, I guess what, I mean, the last thing is just what advice, if any, do you have to, to younger folks who are either looking to, to create work or to come up and sort of navigate this industry? Well, you know, I'm always a fan of really trying to be passionate about what you do, but also like really try to always get better. You know, there's so it's so different than when I started, to be honest, that I don't know. It's like I find out new ways that people do things. And I think it's so incredible. I mean, there's so many different tools and 
in ways and technology. And I think it's incredible to see so many um, possibilities and opportunities, you know, that people can kind of create for themselves that um, are different and new. But, you know, I'm always like, you know, you know, be it, be a fan of the work and not the fame. And like, um, there's so many ways to just continually strive to, to, to continue to strive to, um, you know, to get better, but, you know, more importantly, to just to do better, be better. That's a lovely note to, to leave it on. So Regina, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I like your earrings. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My friend made them actually. Yeah, they're very nice, especially with the black. You know, it's like a nice pop of color and the flowers. Mm -hmm. I've, been <laughs> eyeing, I've been eyeing them all interview. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to ask her about the earrings. They're very, she, they're very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. To read more of our stories and to subscribe to The Atlantic, please visit theatlantic.com slash culture. And you can check out more of our coverage at Sundance right here on The Atlantic's YouTube page and on the Sundance Film Festival's virtual stream.